Hey, happy Friday. Usually it's the spring and the autumn that brings all of the fancy new gadgets and the summer is kind of just dead, but this week was different. We had 70 new releases just this week, including many flagships, so I'll talk about those this week. Then it was also earnings week for many of the tech companies, so I'll talk about which companies made money and which ones didn't. And finally, we'll talk about Stadia having a new direction. There's also a tech knowledge quiz as every week with 20 brand new questions for you to test yourself on. It's linked in the description and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, so there are tons of interesting new products that were released this week, including the Huawei P50 series, which I'll go into detail in a bit. Then ZTE released their flagship Axon 30 and 30 Pro models, which come with the second generation of under-display camera technology, which appears to be much less visible on the screen, and leaks are suggesting that it now takes okay photos, at least in good light. Realme teased the Realme Flash, which is the first Android phone with a magnetic wireless charger, similar to Apple's MagSafe, except this one of course should charge faster and it has an actual ridiculous looking fan built in. Motorola revealed their flagship series, the Edge 20, 20 Pro and 20 Lite, which seem fairly aggressively priced for a change, though they still have terrible software support. And Nokia released the XR20, which is basically just a rugged X20. And those are just some of the phones. With earbuds, we have the Nothing Ear 1, of course, which are the most upvoted product this week in the Crowd app and also seem to be pretty well liked by reviewers so far. LG announced three new pairs of earbuds. And finally, Nokia announced 12 new audio accessories. You heard that right, 12. That's the throw everything at the wall and see what sticks approach. The full list of all of the releases is of course in the Crowd app. And this week we have actually also added a new feature. So for any given product, you can now see a list of all of its announcements and the original launch dates and the prices per country right away. Try it out and let me know if you find that useful. Okay, my first story of the week will be the Huawei P50 series getting announced, and there's a lot to talk about here. Okay, so to begin with, Huawei only had a Chinese launch event for the phone so far, and has only announced prices and availability in China with no hint at an international release yet. They did upload a badly chopped together English translated version afterwards onto YouTube, so it might come to international markets eventually, but this is a stark contrast to their previous flagship launches, which were typically first announced abroad and were global by default. And the phones themselves seem okay and kind of interesting, but while Huawei flagships in the past were like huge ambitious leaps forward and they kind of redefined what technology can do in a smartphone, I feel like the Improvements this year were much smaller, as if Huawei had their hands tied a little. Despite the huge rings on the back, this is the first P-series phone that I know of where the company didn't seem to update the main camera sensor. It appears to be the same IMX700 that they used last year, and only the other cameras were updated. The regular P50 is still on a 90Hz display when everybody else has already moved on to 120Hz or even more in some cases. There is fast charging, but no charger in the box because as rumor has it, Huawei couldn't actually acquire enough chips for chargers. And talking about chips, these phones come either with a Kirin 9000 or a Snapdragon 888, but both only with 4G connectivity despite both chips originally supporting 5G. US sanctions are of course keeping the company from using 5G modems and the company for the first time in many years has actually run out of its own chips so it had to mix and match with Qualcomm. Now don't get me wrong, the P50 series still looks promising and they look like nice phones and it's kind of amazing that Huawei was able to make phones at all given all of the sanctions, but it's clear that the old approach of Huawei where they threw everything and the kitchen sink into these phones is getting increasingly difficult for the company to maintain. Now, two more related news are that A, IDC has just published market share figures for China, showing that Huawei officially fell out of the top five in the country for the first time ever, and it has now been overtaken even by Honor, the brand that Huawei itself spun off not long ago, ouch. And B, Huawei said that about 40 million people have actually updated to Harmony OS so far, which is impressive given that the system has launched just two months ago, but also seems behind Huawei's own schedule of reaching 200 million by the end of the year. And for context, they also have around a billion phones in circulation, so they have only reached maybe four to 5% of their install base so far. Again, I don't want to diminish Huawei's achievements because they are in an incredibly difficult spot. And at least now that they have access to 4G Snapdragon chips, at least they won't disappear overnight or anything, but the situation is getting increasingly difficult. 
Okay, my second story of the week is that last week was earnings week and all the tech companies have published their quarterly results. And yeah, it's continuing to rain obscene amounts of money in the tech industry. Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Samsung, and the others, they basically all had record quarters again. The iPhone 12 series is by far Apple's most successful one ever, to the point where Apple is now responsible for an insane 41% of every $100 being spent on phones globally. Google and Facebook had huge jumps in ad revenue, with Google, for example, reporting that YouTube almost doubled year over year in terms of revenue, and Facebook's Oculus business jumping to control an insane 75% of VR market share on the back of their incredibly popular Oculus Quest. Microsoft had a huge quarter, especially in their cloud business and gaming, saying that the Xbox Series X and S, for example, are their best-selling consoles ever so far. And while Samsung's phone business felt the heat from the competition, their components business is through the roof as well. And to me, the two most interesting little nuggets that I've read in all of the earnings reports are actually coming from Samsung. First, foldables will be their main flagship focus for the second half of the year, meaning that even if the company has a Note series, it will put most of its advertising and channel resources behind the flip and fold devices going forward and will officially treat them as a mainstream product category now. And two, the Galaxy ecosystem, which includes PCs, tablets, and wearables, is growing and will become a major focus going forward too. My prediction for this year was that by the end of the year we'd actually get good foldable flagships for under a thousand bucks. And now with Samsung going all mainstream on this category, I actually wonder whether you think that's realistic. Do you think maybe Xiaomi coming in or some other manufacturer, will they actually push the price below a thousand bucks by this year? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, and my last story of the week will be a quick one, and it is a job posting revealing that Google's Stadia business is hiring to build white label solutions. This means that Google would essentially allow other companies, like maybe game developers such as Ubisoft or Blizzard, to create their own game streaming platform that they could actually sell to consumers directly, but it would use Google service and Stadia tech in the background. This is not a huge surprise since Google's original idea for Stadia, where all the players would actually go to Stadia and buy their games through them, that has not seen a whole lot of adoption, and while they haven't said that they're killing that off, it makes sense that they'd at least explore other options. Now, I don't have a sponsor this week, so it said I'd actually like to ask you for some help. Crowd is already the largest and most accurate database of newly released gadgets anywhere on the internet, and it is cool that you can see all the releases in a single view now, but we'd like to make it even better than that. While we can and do cover the releases in the biggest markets like the US, China, Europe, or India, we'd also love to know more about releases in other countries. So if you are from, I don't know, Brazil or the Philippines or somewhere in Europe that we don't cover super thoroughly yet, and you are up to date with the new launches in your country, please consider adding them to the Crowd app as they happen. That way we could build an awesome, truly global database available to all and you could help your countryman. Adding launches only takes like 20 seconds or whatever, and you can attach one to an existing product if it has already launched in another market already. So in most cases, all you'll actually need is a release date and an optional price or a link to a publication or product page so interested people can visit. We are building Crowd to be a true gadget community, that's why we chose this name, and it works best when people like you and I, tech enthusiasts, contribute and work together to help each other out. So thank you very much if you decide to contribute. If you haven't yet, check out the technology quiz. Everything is linked down in the description and I'll see you next week.